Hey, welcome back to my channel. So uh, in this video, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why I love Golang. But before I do, you have to check out a website just for like a few seconds, okay? Okay, so welcome to the website. It's called Double Web. And Double Web solves the, the problem of um, how do you take a number and, and sort of double that number, right? And now you, you might be thinking, well, that's easy to do, right? You just double it, right? That's easy for small numbers, like one and three. What about big numbers, like 100? Like, how do you double that, right? And the answer is it's really hard. It's hard to double that. No one knows how. I've made this website that allows you to double numbers. Three, the double of that is six. Eight, the double of that is 16. Okay, and we can, we can make a new one. Let's do that big one, 100. And like, again, that's a hard number, so we'll see what is 100 doubled right now it takes a little while right so this is running in the background and we will have to wait for it and if we refresh the page we can see that it's actually 200. okay and if we jump over here into the network tab you'll see that all this website is is an html document some css and uh this png okay so what's so special about this website all right and here's what's so special about that website that entire website that you saw right so images uh you know background jobs everything that's happening there uh, the entire website is a single binary. Okay, that's a single binary. So if I look here, I've got this double web. I run this binary, just a static binary on my system. And I go back and uh, there you go. That's my entire website. Okay, and that brings me to my first of the 10 reasons why I really love Go. Um, number one, you can compile to a single statically linked binary. So imagine you're doing this in PHP, right? So in PHP, uh, if I was doing this, what would I have instead of just this binary? Well, I'd have to have the PHP interpreter on my system. I would have to have probably Nginx sitting in front of it, right? So you have PHP, FPM, or Ruby, right? You'd probably have Puma sitting in front of it, JavaScript, you're gonna have something else. All I've got here is a, is a static binary. The system I'm running this doesn't even have to know it's a Go binary. If you've ever had issues before where you're trying to deploy something, this solves a lot of those issues by just making a single binary that you can just, you know, FTP up if you wanted to. Don't, don't do that, but you could. Second reason I love Go is it's used for more than just websites. So uh, if you look, uh, you know, down here, you'll see these get little guys flying around. That's also a little thing I built in Go. I'll have a video on that uh, in the future. Uh, so JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, what do you do with that? You build websites, right? Primarily, that's what you do. But with Go, you can actually build, you know, real programs. It feels bad saying that, but you know, Docker is built in Go. You're not gonna build Docker in, in PHP or JavaScript. Okay, point number three, uh, it's incredibly fast. So let me just show you how long it takes to build my entire uh, application. It's done, right? It's, it's that fast. So that's the build time. And then running time, uh, performance, like when you're actually running your application, it's insanely, insanely fast. Now, yeah, if you're writing Rust or C, okay, you maybe think Go is a little bit slow, but as, as a primarily a JavaScript developer, Go is, is amazing. All right, fourth point, uh, it has an incredible standard library, so I have fewer dependencies. So if you're from the JavaScript world, there basically is no standard library. There's, there's a few things, so you have like math and a date or whatever, but not a lot, right? PHP has a standard library, but it's pretty inconsistent, not always great to use. Go standard library is amazing. It's amazing enough that I can have this entire website with, you know, routing templates, uh, you know, background work happening. I can have all of that without a single dependency. So I'm here in my Go mod file, uh, which lists all your dependencies. And yeah, there are none. I don't have a single dependency. I mean, just th think about how many dependencies you have in like a, a Laravel application. I know Laravel does more than this, but I mean, to be able to ship something like this without any external dependencies is pretty amazing. All right, point number five, it comes with a production ready web server. Using HTTP from the standard library, I can define a bunch of routes. And then if I uh, just go down a little bit, I can use HTTP to listen on port 3000 and serve up uh, my entire application. Again, no external dependency. All right, number six, allows embedding of files into the binary. So this website, you know, it's got CSS, it's got images, um, but you didn't see any of that in the directory, right? All you saw was a single binary because Go lets you actually embed all of your assets into the binary. So if you look at all these static assets I have here, all of these static assets are uh, bundled right into my binary so that the end user doesn't even have to know about them. And it's really, really easy to do. All I say is, okay, here's static files. It's an embedded file system. And I just say, yeah, that, this is the directory. Go embed this static directory. Same thing for all my templates. Now I have access to them like I have a, a virtual file system. I mean, I guess all file systems are virtual. Anyway, I have a file system uh, that can be accessed, uh, you know, just like any other file system. Okay, number seven has its own templating language. I mean, I guess this is true about a lot of languages, but the, the one in Go is actually, you know, pretty good. Here's an example of the head template, uh, you know, headed in your HTML, right? So I've got a, a title 
here and that's going to be whatever's passed in that dot means whatever you pass in i'm going to use that uh so i can pass in any title i want and uh there i don't have to redefine this head in every single uh html file okay and this is the list view that you saw earlier and uh, here's where i'm actually using the head template and then uh yeah it's just html with uh with you know some special sauce so that i can do dynamic stuff all right, point eight, and this this is like a deal breaker for me now at this point. Now that I've used TypeScript, uh, it's a strongly typed language and it's a statically typed language. So I can almost always jump to definition and I always know what everything is. I actually find it really confusing when people use uh, a statically typed language and then say, you know what, I want everything to be dynamic. I like the idea that anything could be anything and uh, there's just no way for me to know. Let me give you an example here. So I've got double list, right? Uh, what is what is the type of double list? So what is it? So if I uh, you know just hover over it, I can see it's of type double list. All right, so let's go and find out what a double list is. So I can jump right into this. I can always jump to definition. So here I am. I'm in double list, and I can see that it's using a sync dot mutex. What's sync dot mutex? So I can jump into that. So now I'm actually in the Go standard library, right? This is not my code, but you know I can just read through here and all Go code is very self-similar, right? So it's easy to read through this and go, oh, I can kind of understand what's happening. That's not something you can do with uh, JavaScript or PHP. My uh, ninth point, penultimate point, is that uh, Go has native support for concurrency. Uh, that's not something that languages like Ruby or PHP have. JavaScript, yes, it does have that. It's not as good as Go's. All right, so I want to show you that concurrency again, right? So if I put in a number here and I want to get it doubled, so I have this background job right background uh, event happening it's a concurrent thing happening so uh we've got this number but it's not doubled yet but then eventually when i refresh now it is doubled right so how is that happening so in go it's super easy all you have to use use the go keyword and then you define a function and that function is going to happen uh concurrently right so so it's going to go and go off and do that however it wants and I don't have to worry about that abstraction. I just say, yep, yeah, go do what you're gonna do. And here, here I'm saying, you know, sleep for 10 seconds and then, you know, add the number, right? It's not actually hard to uh, double a number. In case you were wondering, that's a really easy thing to do. Yeah, and this idea is called a go routine and you can spin, spin up like, I don't know, I think millions. I don't know, I've heard hundreds of thousands. Anyway, I normally do like five, but you can spin up a bunch of these. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, no problem with your system. It just works fine. It'll go across your cores uh, if you have multiple cores in your system, if it needs to, maybe it doesn't. Okay, and uh, the, the last thing in this list, there are, there are other things. This is just a silly list I wrote up. But the, uh, the last thing I have here is testing is built into the language. Uh, which is just one of those things like the formatter is also built into the language. That's pretty common these days, but testing itself is built into the language. So if you say, okay, I want to write tests, you don't have to get an external package. Some people do, right? There are external pa packages that are good, but you don't have to. There's also a program called Go Tests, which will uh, look at your file and then generate stubs of all the tests for it, uh, which is, you know, awesome. And it's common to go to use table driven tests where you uh, define a bunch of structs, uh, don't worry about what structs are if you don't know. And then uh, you can have just all your different cases like that. It's just a very, very easy way to write and to read your tests. So yeah, Go, it's great, it's fast. It can do websites. It can do Docker. I mean, Docker is built in Go. And uh, you know, it can even do games. And this is, uh, this is a game of Snake that I built in Go just last night because I thought, how hard would it be? And it turns out very, very easy. And I'll have another video on that because this is the stuff that's interesting to me. So I'd love to hear what you think of uh, my reasons that I like Go. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, I'm also really interested in people who don't like Go. What don't you like about it? But if you love Go and there's a reason that like I didn't mention, you know, throw that in a comment. Uh, genuinely curious. It's not for the algorithm. I, you know, I just like talking about this stuff. All right. Have a good day.